All right, chat. So I'm going to introduce you to an Ashes of Creation content creator um, who, how am I not, like, am I on a different account? How am I not subscribed to this? I watch his videos all the time. Anyways, um, this guy creates some really original uh, YouTube content. He puts a lot of effort into it, but um, he's one of the Ashes of Creation's content creators that uh, I'm paying attention to. So um, and this one's titled Why I Have Faith in Af Ashes of Creation. Uh, this guy is, I don't know, maybe one or probably top two of the Ashes of Creation content creators that I know of anyways. So anyways, um, Why I Have Faith in Ashes of Creation. You guys have heard me talk about Ashes of Creation many times on stream. I'm really looking forward to it. I played in the alpha and looking forward to playing in the alpha again. I'm hoping that there's another alpha by the end of the year, but for some reason... I suspect that they are going to uh, not have it till the next till next year, early next year. And for those of you that don't know, the big thing that they've changed late, lately is that they've swapped over from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5. And this has apparently really helped fast track their, their development of the game. So if you're looking forward to Ashes of Creation, that's really good news. So. Hey, what up, boys? So I've targeted this video towards as tight of an audience as possible. These pizza boxes... FC though. 99%. How is this guy not 400 pounds? That's not Diet Pepsi. That's like regular pizza. Is that Findy? I, this is Findy. This is Findy. I think this is Findy, guys. And of you who click this should be the guys who are invested in my video specifically. And if you're one of the unlucky few who have stumbled across my bald head, and are just seeking some ashes of creation copium don't worry the question at hand will be answered in a brief moment this video isn't going to be structured in the same way that you're used to there will be almost next to no editing and this video will have no script the majority of this video will be me talking about what you can expect from this channel over the next few months leading into the alpha 2 and probably what's going to happen during alpha 2 as well but but before we get into that, it wouldn't be fair to continue this video without grabbing ourselves a... This is... He always does something interesting at the beginning of his videos. Oh. Koopa Cola, because we just hit 30,000 subscribers, a huge milestone, and I am forever grateful that you guys have come together to build this community. It's helped me tremendously with my mental and physical health, contrary to popular belief. I'm gonna say, how are you not? Me from a very dark place that I was in about two years ago. And I think we'll start this video with the question at hand. Why do I have so much faith in Ashes of Creation? Then we'll talk about what kind of content I'll be pushing for going forward. And finally, some frequently asked questions that I've saved up over the last year or so of making videos. I hope you'll take the time to listen to me today as the opinions of the Ashes of Creation community mean a lot Bindi, to me. Bindi, that's what I asked, man. How is this guy not 400 saved pounds? saved my life uh, by allowing me to live my dream of entertainment. So, thank you. Now, with all that bollocks out of the way, let's begin, shall we? So why do I have so much faith in Ashes of Creation? Well, back before I started this journey in August 2020, I was working a minimum wage, sitting on a checkout, working for a corporate company who treated me like shit. I was pretty much working... I didn't eat a hot... I ate one hot dog the entire walk, C-Mac. 30 kilometers I walked that stream, and I only ate one hot dog. Uh, Grease-soaked boxes must not be smelling good after... I'm hoping he's clean, like like... Taken, you know, the thing that the pizza sits on, like it normally doesn't just go right on the box. It's actually sitting on like that piece of cardboard or whatever that's inside the box. Hopefully he's at least removed all that shit. But I mean, this is like Asman's uh, room, like on steroids, but it, it's oddly cleaner. <laughs> like he's got more of this fast food crap around, but it actually seems more organized than Asman Gold's room. This is actually crazy a bottom of the barrel life i had lost my you can go to the stores and buy new ones is this a fake setup no he wouldn't do that you're guessing they're unused 
career a few years prior and was struggling to keep myself motivated. To supplement this, I was autistically playing Black Desert Online on a free-to-play account 18 hours a day to give myself some form of purpose. MMOs have meant a lot to me my whole life. I do not recall a single year where I have not been highly engrossed in MMORPG worlds. This fascination started in probably Habbo Hotel, which was an old school chat room type of thing, and I eventually moved over to RuneScape, which then led me to eventually discovering World of Warcraft in early 2005. Because of this, my uh, you know, I never played is RuneScape. all about the Burning Crusade. Never all played the RuneScape. gameplay mechanics and social aspects of that expansion were burned into my soul. To me, and many others, the Burning Crusade was peak World of Warcraft and was the last time the game truly felt like an MMORPG. Now, don't get me wrong, Wrath of the Lich King was also a fantastic expansion. However, uh, the corporate claws of Activision were beginning to show their damage as my favorite type of content the heroic dungeons were dumbed down to the point where the current day meta pull everything and AoE it all down was formed and solidified across the whole of the MMORPG genre. This removed a lot of the social aspects of WoW for me because dungeons were no longer about teaching each other how to crowd control, taking the time to form bonds and attempt bosses multiple times before deciding the people in your group were complete retards. <laughs> this change killed WoW for me, and towards the end of Wrath of the Lich King, it was clear why these changes were made. Because they were getting the game ready for Ghost Crawler's genius plan to make the dungeon experience convenient. The looking for group and looking for raid tools were the- The audio for me is a little off. Like it- Final nail in the coffin for me as World of Warcraft began ramping into the furry mess that it is today. Ever since then, I've been searching for another MMORPG to give me that genuine sense of social gameplay again. I enjoyed Rift, I enjoyed Wildstar, I enjoyed Elder Scrolls Online, but it was ultimately Guild Wars 2 that ended up being Guild Wars my 2 was... theme park MMO of choice. Guild Wars 2 was amazing. I discovered played Guild some... Wars 2 for like 18 months. The first 18 months of Guild Wars 2, I was playing probably 10, 10 to 14 hours a day. It was disgusting how much I was playing Guild Wars 2 was highly addicted to their server versus server uh, stuff. Um, it's something that I really can't believe that other games haven't um, brought in. You know, um, especially like, well, uh, Ultima Online is too old for this now, but um, every game, every PvP game always has people arguing which server is best, is best for PvP. You have it in World of Warcraft. You have people comparing on like White Main to Ferlina or Benediction or whatever, or Grobulus. Um, and in, in, uh, in Guild Wars 2, they actually settle it. You have server versus server battlegrounds, basically, is essentially what they are. And the winners move up to the next level and face the uh, servers that were ranked higher. And it just kind of keeps going. And I, I can't remember how many servers there, there are. I want to say there's, there used to be like seven or nine tiers. And, and each tier had three servers. So... Um, but it was a really, really epic um, form of PvP. And I had actually even suggested when, um, with the issues that they've got with uh, Wrath of Lich King, that they did that um, in Wrath of Lich King Classic. Um, but uh, they're obviously not going to do that. That's too much of a radical change. But uh, I always thought it would be kind of a neat idea to have s actual server versus server battlegrounds. Something else the sandbox MMORPG style, and it gave me the same kind of free feeling that RuneScape gave me back in my youth. I found this in Black Desert Online, which is why I settled on that game for the majority of my time before I found out about Ashes of Creation. Now, when Ashes did start making its round, I'm not gonna lie, I pretty much wrote it off as a scam like most people would. A lot, of people were a lot of people were talking about it as a scam, and I still get I get still get people every day into my stream that like I'm not kidding you every day. And whenever I talk about Ashes of Creation, they immediately are like, oh, it won't be out for ten years. And these are obviously Nimrods who have not been paying attention to recent developments of Ashes of Creation. Um, but I mean, be that as it may, it does look like it's going to be coming out much sooner than 10 years, but you always get the comments, people, oh, it's not, that's not going to be out for 10 years. 
reaction to that Blazy Peon video is kind of ironic now, considering where the channel is and the road that my life ended up going down. But after Asmongold got into that interview with Steven, something clicked in my head. I'm highly autistic in case you didn't realize, uh, and my autism manifests itself in high levels of self-awareness and people reading. When I listened to Stephen talk about Ashes of Creation to Asmund, something felt different. Uh, it didn't feel like a Caspian level sales pitch, this felt genuine. The tone of his voice, the lick of excitement behind his words, you just… you can't fake that stuff. And I was seduced inspired, one might say. Stephen's words completely took me by surprise and I felt compelled to do everything in my power to help that game succeed. And here we are, 18 hours a day, 7 days a week, 2 years later, and together we have built something special. A platform that can truly help this game succeed. For me, Ashes of Creation is the last chance for MMORPGs. If Ashes ends up failing because of social systems and social... If uh, you're telling me this guy is only in three... Look at that laptop. It, yeah, it does look like it's only three actually because this might be his, his private messages. So yeah, he might only be in three. I, I don't... I have no idea how many I'm in. Like I keep looking at mine and going, which ones can I cut out? Which ones can I cut out? Because I'm in like just a disgusting amount. Like, uh, and I'm I'm pro I'm estimating that I'm probably in about thirty. I need to like cut it down because I've I've turned off notifications for all discords except my personal one and my guilds one. Every other discord, my notifications are completely turned off. Um. Anyways, it, what do you guys think? Is there any other? I think there is a um a couple of uh MMOs that. Was it the Ant-Man was talking about were, that were coming out that looked like it might be interesting, but they looked like Asian MMOs, and I'm not really a fan of their style of MMOs that they have. Um, as far as, like, um, MMOs that I think are look really interesting that are coming out, Ashes of Creation is the only one that I have any interest in. I used to be interested in Pantheon, but once their development stalled, um, you know, rest in peace to their former developer, but, I mean, once that happened... And their development stalled, and now it's back, sort of up and running again. If you look at their de de their development path, it just looks like it's so far behind, and it doesn't even look good. Like the game looks terrible. Ashes of Creation actually looks like it's an amazing MMO, and a lot of people are like, "There's no way that they'll be able to get all this stuff in." A lot of the stuff that Ashes of Creation is talking about doing in their MMO was already in in Alpha. Like the city building was in, like you could get to like the second or third rank of cities. You know, like a lot of the stuff is already in place. And a lot of the stuff that they're talking about doing is not super hard to implement. So I don't, I'm not sure why people, there are a lot of people that are so, um, they don't believe in Ashes of Creation. Like they just think it's too good to be true type of thing play not working in this age of YouTube guides bat-chesting over the next big thing and meta mentality sucking the fun out of games then yeah, these aren't even folders like this is this is the ashes of creation discord which I'm in obviously I, I can't tell what this one is I will just give up on MMORPGs for the rest of my life to me if intrepid a passionate indie developer with zero pay to win motivations cannot make an MMORPG succeed then this genre is just lost to corporate in the same way that our modern movies are lost to the likes of Disney's woke trash. I will not be a mindless consumer subject myself to pay to win mechanics that are designed to fundamentally remove I, I will never I will never play a pay to win MMO I just won't do it like uh, any of these pay to win MMOs. I uh, like right now I'm playing World of Warcraft because I want to finish all the raids through Wrath of the Lich King. After Wrath of the Lich King is, is done, I don't know what I will play if I play anything. Like I, I retail? No, 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 I'm not going back to retail. <laughs> um, a, a, unless the retail does something amazing. If they came out with vanilla fresh, like not classic plus because we've seen how badly blizzard screws games up like season of mastery is a perfect example i will not i will not be playing world of warcraft after wrath 
unless they come out with fresh vanilla again. I if they came out with fresh TBC or fresh wrath, I, I wouldn't play it. I, I I think I'd be done. But vanilla, I I may play again. There's no other MMOs that are on the market right now that I have absolutely any interest in playing or even trying. Like none. So I I think I would maybe be done with MMOs. Um save for ashes of creation which i am very interested in move gameplay for easy profit i will not be exploited by gambling and gacha mechanics that have completely watered down the genre that i care so much about i can assure you i will not promote or encourage any of these dog shit mechanics in any way shape or form i will just ignore it and never look back i hold my morals above everything it is all I have left to keep my very broken mind somewhat sane. So let's shift the conversation over to something slightly different. Now, these last two years have been extremely difficult for me for multiple reasons. I've had some heartbreaking real life issues I've had to deal with, extreme financial issues that were crippling me, and the challenge of fabricating interesting watchable content straight out of my asshole with absolutely zero experience or footage to work off. All three of these combined have taken a massive toll on my mental health. However, because of your support, you've kept me through the controversies and droughts, and I really, really appreciate that. You have all enabled me to go from hating my life to working my dream job, and my brain struggles to come to terms with that, to be honest. Having people I revere, like Asmongold and Peon, even give me the time of day just feels surreal. And uh, I don't know if it's just because I'm depressed beyond repair, but I can't help but feel guilty from the unnatural amount of attention. The struggle is the thing that's kept me motivated, and having no money has put me into a kind of fight-or-flight kind of mentality. Now that chapter is finally coming to an end, I'm not sure what to do. But then, why don't I just make a Patreon or stream so you guys can support me and then it's not a problem, right? Well, yes. <laughs> and that's about to change. Today, I have opened up a Patreon, so you guys can support me Actually, it would be cool but if he's going to stream. Allow me to explain why I waited until now to do this. I've had a fairly fortunate childhood. Uh, however, I felt very unsatisfied. That wasn't the life that I wanted to lead. I wanted to forge my own path and rely only on myself. This led to the next 10 years of living in poverty, working minimum wage jobs, and although that was tough, it was very satisfying. I got a lot of pleasure out of progressing through life. When I was building up my seven year career as a baker, I felt like I had a purpose. I had a goal and the skies was my limit. All my achievements, everything I earned was my own. And it turned me into the man that I am today. But I lost my bakery. This guy, this guy was a baker and eats all these pizzas and he's not 400 pounds. Free career for reasons that were out of my control and it crushed me, almost destroyed me. And up until the moment I was listening to Stephen talk about Ashes of Creation, I had all but given up. Stephen Sharif pretty much saved my life. He inspired me to start this channel and I brought my independent mentality into YouTube. Kansas? No, I haven't. YouTube. Uh, I wasn't going to accept people's help until I was confident I could stand on my own two feet comfortably. I just don't feel comfortable needing to rely on others for financial stability. Earlier this month, I reached that goal. And for the first time in two years, I have been able to comfortably cover my bills, rent and groceries. And I will forever be thankful to you guys. You have given me an opportunity to build a stable income from this job. The tiers of Patreon will be offering you additional content. I still do not feel comfortable taking your money without providing something in return. So feel free to have a browse, but just watching the videos is more than enough support, guys. Entertaining you is the only thing that motivates me. If any of you guys don't want to use Patreon, I will also be enabling memberships for YouTube as well, but whatever. But what about streaming? Well, here's the thing. Uh, it's not a meme that I spend 18 hours a day, seven days a week editing. I actually do. Uh, in fact, uh, two or three days of the week. So he's, he's still got six hours left in a day to stream. I'm making these videos somewhat watchable. I want to make mediocre quality videos and to deliver that I need to put the work in. Every hour that I stream is an hour that I'm not editing and I don't view pressing go live and then existing in front of a camera as 
quality content. Yeah, that's not quality Yet, content. This I guy's right. Streaming's not quality content. Why would you? Why would? <laughs> this is not quality content, guys. What are you doing here? Dream. Ashes what are you doing here? Doesn't even exist. I'm How sitting here listening to this guy completely trash what I'm doing here right now. Streamers are trash, dude. Come on, like, why, why, why are you guys here? Brother, I can assure you, I will be streaming during Alpha Two, full time, likely nine hours a day minimum, as well as putting out the regular mediocre quality video, which leads us nicely onto merch. I've had a hundred requests for this. They do. Video. They talk too much. He's they stop videos that you're trying to watch. They're not interesting. Most of them can't PvP. They're garbage. They 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 they're not even they're not even hundred parsing warlocks. Like streamers are trash, man. They're just looking for attention. See, I, I could make this into merch alongside of a I don't know a copa tea or even a copa coffee mug. It's very good ideas from the community, but then it wouldn't be special, would it? It would just be generic garbage with next to no value. I think merch is special. It should be something that is utilized during a special occasion. So for now, I'm just going to put a pin in this subject because I have ambitious plans for merch in the future. Finally, I wanted to talk about why I don't use a referral code. Well, it's simple, really. I just don't agree with it. I think it makes the whole project look like a cheap scam and it completely invalidates your coverage and opinions. I value my opinions being legit above everything else and I will never ever accept money from Intrepid to promote their game. I promote it because I believe in it. I don't need to be compensated for promoting something that I believe is genuinely true. Uh, if Intrepid wants to pay me, um, they're more than happy to. You can reach me at twitch.tv slash Aladar. Trying to push this genre or on Twitter. Um, that I care so much about. Yeah. In a less corporate place. To conclude today's slightly more personal video, I wanted to talk about the content on this channel going forward. If you're wondering, a uh, pink line is simply my stream. Pink line? What is he talking about? A very frequently asked question is, why don't I branch out to cover other games? Well, here's the thing. I do- I'm, I'm like not interested in other games. Like I might show a video of another game on my on my stream, but I am not at all interested in other games. I, I kind of like, agree, like I agree with this guy. Ashes of Creation is the only game that I'm Ooh, interested in. I um, now, as far as like content creation and stuff like that, if that's your living, if if this guy's living is making videos and content creation and stuff like that, um, I mean, it's it's kind of it's kind of noble, I guess, to say, oh, you know, I don't believe in in adding a referral referral code and stuff like that. I I think they kind of want you to. I don't know. Cover Guild Wars 2 very often. I've touched on WoW because that's a game that means a lot to me. I've done an in-depth analysis. You're already of checked Farkin, out. You're not here watching anymore, Cheesy. Various other games in a series <laughs> called Hopium or Copium. The problem is, uh, I just don't give a shit about these corporate MMOs. They're all failures in my eyes. I'm just not passionate about them. New World was a perfect example of this because I covered it extensively, pointing out its garbage flaws and seeing how people have such blind faith in this obvious low effort corporate cash grab after 25 years of failure is it's just exhausting to me the reason ashes of creation has my attention is because of its lack of corporate ties that's the main reason about this project that appeals to me everything else is just a bonus and i will continue to do that is a good point one of the one of the things about ashes of creation is they don't have a corporate like president or ceo or whatever sitting there telling them it, it's got to come out in a month. It's got to come out in three months and pushing them. Uh, the Stephen Sharif guy um, seems very motivated. It's his baby and he wants it to be perfect. And that seems to be his overall like driving motivation is that he wants to basically put out an MMO that is, is as close to perfect as possible. And that's more important to him than getting it out it's, it's, I think that's one of the reasons why so many people are also disbelieving of the game in general is because they just don't believe that, uh, um, money overall isn't going to be a driving factor in when the release of the game is.
obviously they want the game to be successful. They want it to be profitable and stuff like that. But it, they keep talking about how they understand that a, a quality game is going to bring in profits as well. I do my best to spread awareness for this project so it can reach as wide of an audience and as diverse of an audience as possible. I think for this project to fulfill the ambitious goals of Steven, uh, the community needs to come to- Where's the investment coming from? The Steven Sharif guy, I don't know the full story behind it, um, but he's a self-made, like, extraordinarily rich guy, basically. Um, uh, Mike G, bro. He's an extraordinarily self-made entrepreneur. Uh, I'm, I don't know the history of what businesses he's involved in or anything like that because I just honestly don't care. Um, but he has basically self-funded the uh, bulk of the project. Um, it was already basically without even any any um, purchases from the community itself, such as like buying into Alpha like I did or what have you or anything off of the um, um, shop, like merchandise or anything like that. Um, it was already self-funded by him entirely um, from day one. So whether they made a penny off of Alpha or not, he'd already basically bankrolled the entire project. So it's, you know, it's already been basically paid for and he just is having the developers work at their pace. Again, not entirely sure what his businesses are in the past, but um, it's nice that he is so motiva motivated to come up with this exceptional game. And he doesn't have somebody staring or, you know, looking over his shoulder or something like that. The worst thing that could happen right now to Ashes of Creation is if he were to sell the company to a larger developer or something like that. I don't think that's going to happen. So let's not start any rumors or anything like that. But if that were to ever happen, that would be enormously bad for the game. Together and help Intrepid achieve this, or we're destined for this genre to die. I believe if Ashes of Creation does come to light one day, it will spark another age of MMORPGs like WoW did in 2004, reigniting that escapism that MMORPGs excel at. Currently, logging in to do dailies, not socializing, speed running through the content to win. Uh, that isn't the escapism that made WoW go viral. That's just another generic game. As I said, Ashes of Creation is the last straw for me, and I will do everything in my power to help it succeed. And if that means I'm destined to be stuck in this niche, covering a game that doesn't even exist for the rest of my life, then so be it. I'm still so far away from where I want to be in terms of delivery and quality. There's so many ways that I can improve my videos and I'm slowly experimenting with new techniques and seeing what feels good and fits the format that you guys have grown to love so much. You can very much expect my videos to continue improving leading into Alpha 2 because they're very far away from where I want them to be. Does this mean other games are completely off the table? No, of course not. I will continue making the videos that I want to make, and I feel like if you get stuck doing something that you don't enjoy, then what's even the point? A major part of my growth has been making sure I am doing what I want to do, and to not be chasing the next big hype wave or getting stuck making some shitty content because it brings in the money or whatever. That would put me straight back into the position I was in before I even started YouTube, working a job that I hate. But, as usual, I am just one nerd, desperate for a good MMO. And today's video has been a little different. I appreciate everyone who's watched until the end, and I cannot express how much you have changed my life. I will continue to push myself, and hey, our Discord community is extremely active, full of complete retards, just like yourself. We have multiple- So one of these three Discords, I, I again this is no this looks like it's a this is probably his personal discord and then there's three more so it looks like four discords he's he's actually in multiple discussions about the same tired topics every day and i'd love for you to come and join and give us your shit takes so that i can get triggered and then ban you but Nark, I love your bulgy wulgy pounces onto your chest and nuzzles your neck. Oh my, someone's <laughs> happy. I press my paws into your chest and rub my butt on your bulgy wulgy. I can tell you're excited to see me. Oh, I'm excited too. I hope what the hell are we watching?
I'm only joking. I want you to be as rough as you want. And to that I say, uh, you need to calm down with the bedroom talk. We shouldn't be role-playing out in public like this because... Uh, how was that? We have a large audience watching and I've already come. What? Okay, interesting, uh, interesting, uh, hold on. Hey, what up, boy? interesting end of the video um anyways uh yeah so if you guys aren't uh familiar with narc uh whether you're watching me live stream right now um in fact this video will probably go live tomorrow so if you're watching this on youtube i'm actually currently doing a 24-hour stream so i'll still be on perhaps when you're watching this video but narc is uh basically um primarily just doing ashes of creation stuff it looks like he's got a couple oh these are he does a couple of other videos as well, but I, his focus is obvious on Ashes of Creation. I will leave the links to his video um, and his channel down below uh, on YouTube. So if you're not subscribed to his channel, please go and subscribe, like his video as well. Um, as far as Ashes of Creation, I do believe in the project. I believe it's an extraordinarily ambitious project um, and game. I think that ambition is probably probably the reason why some people really doubt it because there's so much that um intrepid is trying to do with this game so but a lot of the stuff that they've said that they're talking about doing such as the weather system and you know the town building and all sorts of other stuff we've already seen it in their live developer uh talks and stuff like that so this stuff is already working in game they tested the, the city building in Alpha 1, so it's already there. So a lot of the stuff that they're talking about doing, they've already implemented. They've already shown examples of it in it, it actually working. The weather systems look actually really outstanding. I can't believe that Blizzard or other um, MMOs haven't uh, done it in their game. Like, why is, uh, you know, why is there not snow on the ground sometimes in, in um, you know, certain in the Grand or something like that? You know, like during winter months or something like that. Why is there not sometimes a layer of snow? Like you'd think that it would be something that would be relatively easy to implement, but the weather system that they're able to use specifically, they they actually said that during their developer talks, um, that the weather system that they were able to use is a lot has to do with using Unreal Engine Five. The big test for Ashes of Creation, I believe is how is Unreal Engine 5 going to run when there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people all in the very small area? And Intrepid Studios has said that it will run perfectly fine. It, that's, that is the big question mark for me. But the rest of the game look, looks absolutely fantastic. So anyways, that's it for my video. If you enjoyed the video uh, and enjoyed the commentary, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video. It does really uh, help my uh, algorithm, of course. And if you want to chat to, to me more about uh, games or anything else in general, you can watch me stream six nights a week at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern until extraordinarily late. We are starting very early today because it's a 24-hour stream, but we're going, uh, we go usually really late. So like 9 p.m. Eastern until usually like, um, you know, 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m. Eastern. Um, Tuesday through, uh, Tuesday through Sunday. So anyways, if you want to, uh, come chat with me there, by all means, uh, please do so. And we'll talk to you in the, uh, in the next video. Have a great day.